So Kelly, what I like to do is start off by asking every single guest, um, where are you from and what was it like for you growing up as a child? Okay, so I'm from Mansfield in Nottinghamshire. Uh, growing up for me as a child, um, mum, I came from a family where my mum was a single parent and got two siblings, so we didn't really have a great deal growing up, um, but my mum was a hard worker. Uh, she, we didn't get to go on holidays. We didn't, she did everything for us. She was always there. So she was very supportive in absolutely everything, but in relation to going on holidays and having the designer thing, you know, growing up as a kid, we didn't really have all of that. But what I did have was a supportive family. Uh, got into a lot of trouble growing up. Um, yeah, doing the usual drinking and smoking on parks when you shouldn't be. And, uh, didn't like school, but did did all right at school, but got into a lot of trouble at school because of my mouth, really. But yeah, <laughs> pretty much it. <laughs> so, so it's fair to say you was a bit of a rebel growing up then? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, always did what I wanted to do, end off. <laughs> That's amazing. And, uh, you know, did you have any siblings growing up at all? Yeah, uh, so I've got a sister, um, a younger sister, and then an older brother growing up. Um, no step brothers or sisters, just me my mum brother and sister awesome and did you go into like college or anything like that or was it straight to school and then work um so I was at school and towards the end of high school I started working so I was 16 working I worked um as a silver service waitress uh, for the queen uh, went to Buckingham Palace Millennium Stadium Royal Ascot did those kind of events and then went to college to do a public service course and throughout college was working as well, but really started working from the age of 16 and haven't stopped since. <laughs> Amazing. So well, you'd mentioned the queen there. You've, you've, you went to see the queen. Yeah. So I did some work at Buckingham Palace grounds for, um, I think it was an event that she was holding where she was knighting people. It was, it was a, it was a garden party. Um, so that was on the rear premises. So it's on the garden of Buckingham Palace. So that was quite interesting. And then I saw the Queen several times, worked in the jockey suite box and next to the Queen box at Royal Ascot, um, silver service waitress in there. So Amazing, amazing stuff. Mm. So you, you were 16 at that period, 16, 17? Yeah, 16, 17 and 18, I did that. Wow, okay, it's late teen. So after 18 years old, what, what was your next job? Uh, between 18 and 20, I worked for an aerial company just so on telephones. Um, that was throughout the day. And then at night, I did bar work and things like that. So, um, yeah, I was just proper on it all the time. And then 20, joined the police. So. Wow. Okay. So, so you mentioned the police there, 20 years old. That's quite young to join the police. Why, why did you want to join the police? Well, I wanted to join at 18, um, I applied for Hertfordshire. I obviously did the public service course at college, so um, passed all, all of that and then applied straight to Hertfordshire Police, but I failed by four sit-ups, which was uh, unbelievable. So that really disheartened me, and then I just went and had a job in, in the aerial company and bars, et cetera, but um, found my mojo again a little bit later on and passed everything so um i think i wanted to join the police really from the age of three that's all i ever wanted to do growing up at school um was join the police everybody said i'd never make it because i was just too much of a rebel <laughs> <laughs> yeah i see the point um but uh i don't know what it was i think because growing up obviously i know you've asked me this question growing up my we was my mum was in a really abusive relationship with my dad um who I've had no contact with since I was probably five or six years but I remember him smashing a window I was underneath it you know beating my mum black and blue and I suppose for me um during the early years of my childhood all I saw was police officers and them putting away the bad man kind of thing and I suppose maybe I wanted to protect my mum and, you know, give it that I want to put away the bad man, bad, bad man too, and the bad people. So I, I think that's where it's come from. But all I remember is from 
around the age of three, that's all I ever wanted to do was join the police force. And that never, ever left me really. Wow. That's inspiring. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's amazing, amazing stuff. It's like you, you know, you wanted to put the bad people who was doing bad things to your mum, right? Um, same kind yeah. of duty, I suppose. Um, great stuff. So what kind of jobs did you do? You joined the police at a very young age, you know, you was a PC for a while. Uh, what else did you do in the job? Um, so I start, started at 20, um, start, <coughs> sorry, started as a police officer, um, two years probation and halfway through the two year probation, I got caught pregnant. So my probation was extended a little bit, um, went back to work full time with Ashton being, um, three months old. So that was really hard and challenging. Um, I passed my probation and I stayed as a response officer, so working shifts. Um, and at the start of that, me and my part, me and Ashton's dad, my son's dad, we split. So I became a single mum. And from that point, I ended up then being a beat manager, um, just really struggling mentally with everything that was going off. Um, I took some time out with stress. Um, and then came local to where I live to be a response officer. And that's, that's, I just had my whole career as a response officer, really. I did the sergeant's exams, but didn't take that anywhere. Um, I, I think I failed the first, first, first lot of sergeant's exams, but no, I didn't take them anywhere. Wow. And, and how long was you in the job in total? Uh, 12 years in total. So. Wow. 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 Mm. And you mentioned you went through some kind of mental health and, and the stress. And I can imagine you know, being the single mom, especially with a, a job like being a cop, you know, what kind of impact did that make on you? Um, lots and lots of impact really. So, um, obviously being a young cop and having a child, um, I was buying my first home as well. I was, I think I was, tw I was 22 when I had Ashton. So it was a lot. And Working constantly, my, my whole relationship failed. I'm not going to totally blame it on work, but we never had any time for one another. I was never at home for Ashton, really growing up. So I felt like a bit of a failure as a, as a first mom. He was three months old and having to go back to work full time. Um, it's not really what a mum should be doing. I, I wasn't bonding with him. My mum had him while I was always at work. So it felt like it wasn't really mine. It was, it was my mum's. Um, yeah, so it, it was, that was stressful. But then going back to work, being a, sing, well, being a single mum when I was a single mum, that was even more challenging because I was told that I couldn't change my hours. Every, every shift pattern that I was putting in was getting rejected. I would got arrogant inspectors telling me that um, I'd chosen my life. So um my words to him was I didn't choose to be a single mom yes I chose to have a child I didn't choose to be a single mom and at this point it was even harder for me to to kind of work because my mum couldn't have Ashton as much because she she'd just been diagnosed with cancer so not only had I got um a young child recently separated you know going through uh, solicitors and everything my mum had also been diagnosed with cancer and I'd got no support whatsoever from anybody in the job I was told to get a living nanny um, I was told well the work you know that I'm supposed to work for work and not vice versa and yeah it made me really really poorly to the point where I felt worthless it wasn't just a job that made me feel like that it was Ashton's dad um, I felt as though I was failing at everything, being a parent, being a partner, you know, being a police officer, just failed in every single aspect. Um, I went light here, I did cut my arms. I remember one one night just totally cutting my hair because I felt so ugly, uh, worthless, helpless. Um, I remember wanting to take my life. Um, I remember driving to work and just driving down the motorway and just thinking, I want to crash into the barrier and maybe um it'll all be over so to the point i got to work one day um there was a really good sergeant that could see that i wasn't right he drove um from where i was working 40 minutes to my doctors and literally took me to my doctors 
where I just broke down and that was it. Um, I had seven months off work to try and work out everything and I did. Um, I worked out obviously the problems within um, the separation. So we, we finalised the house, you know, any pain debts or everything like that, that was finalised. My mum got better. She'd had the chemo and everything else. So things did pick up and then I went back to work full time. But obviously going back to work full time, that had its challenges only because I was then targeted as the problem child because of everything that I'd gone through. So it was now a case of proving that I wasn't a problem child and just doing what I should have been doing wow. in the first place. Um, Kelly, you know, I'm... I know this is the first time you're hearing some of this. So, yeah, um... I, know, I know, I knew, I knew a part of your story, but you know, what you just explained there is, is um, at the same time saddening, obviously the lack of support from the job and the story you have, but now seeing you, the person you've become is a huge inspiration. I know people who are going to be <laughs> listening to this, you're not going to inspire, you know, you're going to inspire thousands of people across the Shift Success platform and, and the world. We've got a we know, global audience now and it's, it's inspiring. And we'll go on to some of your successes in a second. But I just want to say, you know, what you shared there, thank you, um, because it's, it's truly remarkable and it takes a lot of will to share that. Um, so at this point, you've gone back into the job. You're proving you're not a problem child, can quote. Um, why, you know, how long did you wait until start thinking about business why did you you know start thinking about that um well I didn't really so business came to me kind of like accidental um I went back to work and I was doing my job my life was picking up bit by bit um and then it was only when I met who is my now husband um is when I started getting into business however when we first got together I realised that there were some similar patterns going off from my first relationship. Um, I've known my husband for many, many years, but I was never at home. He was, I was always seeing, you know, my son was with him. I just felt like, when, when will I ever get time to be a proper mum? And I was a horrible person. I was moody. I was, um, I don't know, maybe argumentative, tired. And I was getting poorly as well, poorly a lot, because I was, I suppose I was putting too much pressure on myself, doing the job, working. Um, I ended up with like a vitamin D deficiency. I was trying to take cash in it out, trying to, you know, just trying to please everybody. Um, and it got to a point where I was happy in the job. I was happy with what I was doing, but I wasn't happy. And with Kevin, he is very supportive. And I just thrashed the idea of maybe, you know, just coming out of the job and starting just having a normal job. And he said, look, I'll support you no matter what. So that's what I did. And then in the meantime, we then started up on this business because I accidentally got pregnant. When I say accidentally, it had a vasectomy. So it wasn't planned. <laughs> um, so it gave me more time to work on business um so it it was originally kevin's business idea um but behind every man good man is a good woman is it is that the saying that, that's right that's you the nail on the head, then. Yep. <laughs> i did what every woman does undermines and underpins and just tears everything apart and i just teared the whole business apart um and just changed changed it around the only thing that remained really was the name um, so all the branding and everything else. And that was it. I wasn't supposed to be doing what I'm doing full time, but I took over and took control and I love it. <laughs> amazing. No, it's amazing. Yeah. Can I just go back to, you know, you mentioned you, you know, you're self-harming and you wanted to end your life. Um, for anyone listening, because there's a lot of people in the job who, who are going through that and who have been through it. How did, how did it help you overcome that? Um, what at the time, how did I overcome it? I honestly don't know. I am, and this is me being truthful. I am, I don't know why I didn't smash into the ball. There was nothing to stop me at all. Um, I think the only thing that stopped me was my son. I overcome it just step by step, day by day. And it was the pure 
total mental breakdown that I had. Um, and it was probably the sergeant that did what he did is probably, you know, why I'm still here today, because it did get that scary. I couldn't close my eyes without thinking of wanting to hang myself. Um, yeah, look, thinking back, it's horrible and it still hurts me emotionally. And I didn't think, I don't think about any of that now. I don't think, I just think of it as a bad time. But, mm. you know, now you ask, and I think about those things, it's it's quite emotional, but... Um, so you just you basically your sergeant was there at the time. Thankfully, he he took you to the doctors, and the day by day you just started feeling better. And you met Kevin, obviously, and yeah. Kevin allowed you to um, just give you that chance to come away from the job and go into business, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, he's he's so supportive in absolutely everything. The only thing that matters in Kevin's world is mine and his children's happiness. So um, to have somebody like that, when you've never had somebody like that, it's wow. Okay. So I owe in my life and everything else. Kevin, I've met Kevin and he's a remarkable gentleman. And uh, (laughs) yeah, he's he's, he's, he's such a a lovely guy. Um, So you've gone into business this time. Um, So um, 12 years into the job, you've gone into business um, and I believe, um, because you hadn't, or well, we hadn't met, even though, because we're both from Nottinghamshire Police, but we hadn't met, right? We, we didn't know each other. Um, yeah. So you went into business and you were making a £600 loss per month? Yeah. So we, while we were in the police, I was working with Kevin on the business, kind of like helping him and things like that. So I knew a little bit about it. And yeah, we we were spending six um, we were spending six hundred pound a month on the business through advertising and things. So we're making a loss per year. Um, yeah, so six hundred pound loss. And then when I got pregnant, that was the time where we sat back and I thought, well, you know, Kevin's given me absolutely everything, so I'm going to try and give him his dream as well, which his dream was for this business to be um, big and recognised and for him to be able to live um, a full-time wage doing what he wants to do, being his own boss. So I thought I would try and help him get there. (laughs) Amazing, amazing. Okay. And when you was going into business on your own and uh, with Kevin, you know, how... What you mentioned, you was making a loss on marketing and so forth, and you know what yeah. other difficulties did you experience? Um, oh, it was, just, it was just so fr- it was it was so frustrating. It was I was working a full time job, Kevin was working a full time job, and then we were trying to manage properties, you know, in our spare time, which we never really had any spare time. You know, we were never with children. It felt like I was giving my life to work already. Um, so we were making a loss and. We never had that time together. If it, if we had the time, it was interrupted. It it was just, it was hard. It was really hard, and it felt like, it felt like you were paddling on water in a deflated dinghy. It, you were sinking constantly, and I just thought, well, why are we doing this? Yeah, we could have given up. We we could have said, you know what, it's taking. We're losing so we're losing six hundred pound a month that we haven't got, and plus our time. In any normal person's mind, that's really not worth it. Mm, yeah. um, no. Okay. Um, for those who are listening, do you want to ex- explain to people what you do? So you are the founder of. Um, <laughs> founder of Ask Estate Agents. Um, so we specialise in HMO management, property management. And we do sales, sales and lessons. So amazing. Yep. Amazing stuff. So at this point, six hundred pound lost. You find it difficult. Difficult. You're kind of paddling, but you're not moving forward. Um, how did you hear about Shift Success? <laughs> so this was at the time that I wanted to. We we decided to buy ourselves a year, um, or was it two? We we decided to buy ourselves some time. Um, I was pregnant, so I said, right, we've, we've got X amount of months for me to get my head into all of this, work it all out, um, try and reshape the whole business. Um, so we brought ourselves some time and I said, if it doesn't work after that, we'll forget about it. I just want my life back, you know, or I want a life either way, 
either or. So I was at home pregnant, working on the business, and then I came across your sheet, your quiz, police officer quiz. Even though I wasn't a police officer at the time, I thought, oh, well, I'll take this. Because I think once you've been a cop, you're always at heart, even love it or hate it. You know, there are things that make you feel as though you're still a cop sometimes. So I took it and that's where our relationship began. (laughs) Amazing. Amazing. That's right. So, okay. So um, at this point, you know, you in business with Kevin, panel with that water, you've came across Shift's success um, Mm -hmm. and you've joined Shift's success. What happened next for you? Um, Wow. So uh, I joined with you on the cohorts in April. (laughs) May, I think I've totally lost the plot because I'd opened a high street office, still making a £600 loss, um, with no properties on my book, really. Um, Yeah, so went totally crazy. You advised me not to do it. I know you did. Uh, And quite rightly, you know, looking back. However, uh, in the May we opened the office, then by the... January, February, the year after, we'd made 120k profit uh, just in that short space of time. So, for me, being a bit of a sod it, I'm all in. I'm gonna do it. I've given myself this time. Whatever you know, I'll deal with it. And we did. So, went wow. from making minus 600 to 120k. That is phenomenal. Um, the you know, and, and for people listening to this. Um, I don't want you just thinking that is the norm, right? Because yeah. Kelly is not the norm. I can tell you now, I've seen Kelly put in the work. <laughs> she is one of the biggest hustlers I've ever met. And to go from 600 pound loss to over 120,000 pounds is a phenomenal achievement. And, you know, even now, I think you're above 200,000 in revenue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, 250, 270, something along that mark. It is mm. phenomenal built and you know you've built this business from you know making a loss and you and kevin have worked as a team you've you've got employees now is that correct as well yeah yeah so three five full-time members of the staff so there's me and kevin obviously and then three 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 girls one's actually started today so amazing how do you, kelly how do, how do you feel just knowing that when we first met in that hotel <laughs> with kevin to where you are now just and, and in fact for where you was when you was depressed and suicidal where you are now how does that make you feel well that depressed and suicidal kelly i don't know that person i really do not know who that person is anymore um don't get me wrong i am scared to death that someday that this will all be taken away from me but i'm not scared either because i think once you get to a point you understand where your business is going and what you need to do so we, we, we have things implemented to make sure that it doesn't go wrong because I want this life. I want to keep this life. In fact, no, I don't. I want more. And that's the thing. I will always, always want more. Um, the first year was really hard. Like you said, you know, I hustled. And when I say I hustled, I hustled. Yeah, it was a case of, it was no excuse. I'd got a three month old baby. Um, I still gave her my time because I couldn't give it Ashton. I still gave her time. But it was a case of me and Kev, we, we slept in separate beds for a year, you know, so we both got, we got that sleep. We do still sleep in separate beds only because we love it. <laughs> um, there's benefits to things. Um, but we, we knew that it was going to be a whole year for all on business. Um, we were there to support each other. So it was forget the date nights. It's forget that, oh, we don't spend time with one another. It was literally all in. We just had to keep reminding each other that we are there for each other. We're supporting. And what is the year of doing that when you've just got a lifetime of doing what you want to do after, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. And just, yeah, whatever. This is my life. I I will do what I want to do. Thanks. What you said there is remarkable. Um, So basically you realize you're going to put in a solid work for a year so you can no excuses yeah no excuses i lost lost friends and you know what i look back and they're not even friends seriously i think thank god you know cutting the dead losses to get the gains it's been it's been worth it 
So basically you put in the work for a solid year and you still do now, but you've that first year you put in because you knew at the end of it, you've got a life that most people dream of. Right. And it's true. Yeah. You're in the yeah. one top percent of the UK earners and you have a team, you get to live life in your terms. You are not, you know, you are a phenomenal entrepreneur. And sometimes I think a lot of people out there, they think of this instant gratification thing and they yeah. don't put in the work at all. And a lot of people say, oh, I can't do this because I've got a family. I'm a mother. I've got kids. I've got a marriage. And no, you, no, no, no. Proving people no. wrong. You've done it. No, there is no excuse. There is nothing to stop you whatsoever. It is, I don't know. I mean, I can't remember the film very well, but Pursuit of Happiness, you know, the guy that just never, ever gives up. Mm. And he knows that he's got that reason why right at the side of him. I had got my whole reason why it couldn't fail. And that was my family. I did all of this for my family. I, it's don't get me wrong I've laughed through it I've had I've had extreme excitement in my belly I've had these oh my god moments and I've had fuck moments shit you know and I've had moments where I think oh my god if I don't paddle quick I'm going to sink you know yeah. um I've had moments where I've cried because of that I'm that exhausted but it's it's about having your A team you you cannot play your A game if you've not got your A team that's amazing. You may as well go home. <laughs> uh, that is amazing. So a lot of people, you know, and I hear this as a common excuse, a lot of people blame their family for the reason they can't go into business. They'll go, I've got kids, I've got this to do, I've got this to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm quite open about this excuse because I've done a podcast episode on excuses. Um, yeah. for you, you say you kids, you family are the reason why I have to yeah. achieve this. You are the reason why I want to be successful. Um, and I wish, you know, everyone listens to this. That is an amazing reason why, you know, you, that should be never be the reason why you can't achieve your dreams. Yeah, it is difficult because obviously I see some people and, you know, I don't, with certain relationships or children, or, you know, families do argue if they don't get a certain time together. I'm really, really lucky. I've got Kev and the kids who are really supportive in absolutely everything especially my husband is not a jealous or person he's probably just happy that he's being left alone for a bit and I'm not nagging at him or what have you um but there are there are people out there that are I don't know nagged at I suppose and people don't are, are not on the path together some people might see other people's dreams as just that a dream and that it's never going to go anywhere well, me being honest with you, I thought Kev's business, his dream, his idea was pretty lame, pretty pathetic, that it wasn't going to go anywhere. Um, it wasn't while he was in control. So my advice would always be get them on board, mm. get them on board and just get the help and explain what it is that you want to achieve and just ask for a bit of time you do in a relationship you don't ask for much you know maybe ask for a year's time just to solely concentrate on this because you never get it back and actually time's never promised nothing's ever promised so if you don't do it now when are you going to do it it's true that's very true very true okay mm -hmm. so at this point so this point you was you you made a you know 120 plus thousand pounds in business you're scaling very fast you're now over 250,000 in revenue which is amazing uh, you yeah. you know been nominated for national awards you've got a team now you've been featured yeah. in magazines as well yeah yeah so HMA magazine and then we've got the Esther's awards next month 4th of July so we're finalists for the Esther's awards as well which is a big the recognized estate agency awards in the UK Wow. What makes you different, Kelly? You know, because you're not like any other estate agent or letting agent. And, you know, I believe a lot of people come to you from other estate agents and letting agents. What, what makes you different? <laughs> um, I think it's my skill set and I think it's the person. I, I think it's, do you know when people say you've had a life for a reason and you don't know why until it all comes together? I think all my experiences in life, now serve a purpose so mm -hmm. whether it's the tenant that comes to me i i kind of understand their story and with the police you know we learn to listen we learn to deal with problems we learn so it's we're not an estate agent that the computer says no um we are the agent that listens and and does you know it's okay i think that's what makes us different that's amazing so you mentioned something really profound there so you mentioned 
it's something about your police skills. What makes yeah. you different is listening to your customers, to your tenants, your landlords. What other skill sets do you believe that you've transferred over from being a police officer into your own business uh, um, has made you so successful? Problem solving, most definitely. So problem solving, thinking fast on your feet mm. um, has, has been a good one. Learning how to read people. Um, so knowing whether they're bullshitting you or whether they're, they're just time wasters. Um, remaining calm has been a great... Calm. Love that. Yeah. Great quality. Um, and just basically learning not to be a dickhead of the boss like most... Sorry, uh, sergeants leader. and inspectors out there. <laughs> so it's so yeah. almost like a leader. Leadership. Yeah, understanding what people want from leadership. So obviously we've, we've, we've got members of staff now. Not one of my members of staff, but the one that started today. I can't say anything for her. But Aisha and Elsa, they've never had a day off sick. El Aisha's been with me two years. Um, That's amazing. So it, that tells me that they're happy. Um, I know to re reward good work. I know to acknowledge and reward, you know, just treating them how I want to be treated as a person, as an individual, and not just a number. That is... I want to build a team that's not replaceable. I love that. Doesn't that is there, there's so many lessons you can take from that guy. So it's fair to say that from the police, you've actually, you, you, I mean, you've listened quite a lot. Listen, problem solving, thinking fast, reading people, staying calm and leadership. They are huge skill yeah. sets that you've transferred over. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with regard, cause, and, and also just a side note, we've had a meeting before and we've been on camera and we've, I've seen you in your office and I've seen one of your customers give you some money as a, as a Christmas present. Oh my and, God, and I think, yeah. And I think I just, that blew my mind. I mean, customers coming in, just saying thanks to you for the work that you've done for them and just treating them like, you know, a human being and be the leadership. I, I, that gave me goosebumps. I know when I saw that yeah. because, you know, that's why we're in business, right? To serve customers. And that was just amazing for me. So, and that's we testament to, to how Kenner, you And I was like, oh, bless him. You know, we didn't, I didn't want the money. I was just, because I was on call with you at the time, wasn't I? I was like, oh my yeah. gosh. But we've, we've had chocolates, we've had flowers. We, um, our landlord's from Switzerland. They've sent Swedish chocolate. Yeah, the gifts just keep coming all the time. and It's phenomenal. Well, yeah, I've never experienced anything like it, to be fair. It's testament to your hard work. It really, really is. Um, <laughs> so, so with regards to where you were, you know, yeah. depressed, um, suicidal, um, single mother, um, to, to now joining shift success and having this successful business that you have, what does your life look like now? You know, try and explain to the, to the, to the audience, how do you feel when you wake up in the morning? How do you spend time with your kids now? Okay. So my life now is this, this is the Kelly now in comparison to the Kelly, uh, four years ago, four or five years ago. I don't have any friends that are not positive. So I've met a lot of friends through the Shift to Success course. They're all positive. They're all, they're all there behind me. I know I can pick up a call if I'm down, the support. So I've got great friends. I've got an amazing husband, four beautiful children. So anybody that says that they can't do because they've got kids, that's rubbish. I've got four, crack on. Um, <laughs> we spend time together as a family. So my weekends on my own now, and that's, solely for the children, whether it's doing a jigsaw puzzle or, I don't know, going shopping with them, going, taking them clothes shopping or cinema dates. Oh my God, I love my cinema dates when it's back open. Hmm. Um, but we just, we go out for walks. We do what we want to do. And if I wanted to finish work early to be able to do that, I can. Um, so I've got a great family. We all get on amazingly. Um, I booked a holiday recently. I don't think I've told anybody I've booked this <laughs> holiday, but oh my God, this is my dream. Talk to me about that because that's a big thing. For, that's a bucket list thing for you, isn't it? Tell me about that because you, yeah, you made me emotional, very emotional. Yeah, this is my bucket list and this has been, I've wanted to do this since I was so, so young. Um, I've always wanted to go to America. So I'm at that point in my life now where I can just book it and just go. So I have just booked it and I'm just going to America in four months time. So I booked it 
was it last week? Um, and we're doing it an RV with all the children. So starting at San Francisco, going down the Californian coast, then going over to Grand Canyon. I'm going to fly in a helicopter over the Grand Canyon, over to Zion, and then finishing off at Vegas. So for me, I have never, ever, in a, I've never had money to do anything like that. I've always had to save, even if I've only ever been to um, Bulgaria, which is where I went last year, actually, um, and then Spain once before. So I've never really had the money to go and just do a holiday. Um, we've got caravan, we've got a caravan at Tatashona, so we purchased that. So we, we've got stuff where we can go and spend time as a family, but... America baby, telling my kids that I feel like I have just won at the parenting malarkey. It's it is, it's amazing. You know, you you felt like a failure as a mother. And yeah, I'm no, no longer a failure. I'm I'm doing what I should have been all along. And it's not just because um obviously our business is making money, it is because I've got the choices now. I can go and be with my children. I've got the time for my children. Yeah, it's great, you know, when you've got the added money to be able to do things. Um, yeah, whereas when I was in the police, I was I was a queen for a day, and that was on the 15th of each month I got paid, and then I was a pauper for the rest of the month. So and that that was it. But there's no, there is no more queen for a day. I'm queen for the year, or as, I'm queen for as long as I want to be. Um, there is no not just one paycheck a month it's none of that exists anymore so <laughs> I'm just really happy and I get up with a purpose I don't get up and think I don't want to go to work today I don't um, yeah it's just because you've got that amazing support that amazing family and just you you can do what you want to do and book those things. And that is why I worked my art off for a year. No excuses, just cracked on. And it was to get the shit done, to be where I am today. I mean, how long have I been doing this business now? Two years on the high street. So two mm -hmm. years, I've made 250 plus yeah, in two years. And I want to double that again next year. That's amazing. And that's one of the next question, actually. You mentioned... Um, you know, doubling the business. What are some other visions that you have for Kelly Statham and, and your family? Well, this is what I've been struggling with for a few months. So I obviously set my goals and my targets. It's been very, very fast paced. And then I flatlined um, a little bit. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew where my life, how my life had changed, but I didn't know where I wanted it to go after and what I noticed was I stopped setting myself goals and just kind of like just settled and started living and this is where America come in I thought you know what I can do it I'm going I've worked hard let's let's book it um so for me the next six months is just going to be about living because I've worked so hard for the last two years I'm having six months and then we'll see maybe um you'll see a few more estate agents out there um, in different counties for Nottinghamshire. So I am setting up, implementing things in the office to take me away from the business now so I can go where I want to do, go where I want to, or I may change direction and just start a total new business. Amazing. I don't know. You've got the choice. But, You've got the choice. Yeah. But for six months, it's about me now. It's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, if, you, if anyone's listened to this, who, you know, he's a single mom who's got kids who may feel a bit, you know, depressed and just stuck, what parting advice could you give someone to inspire them to change their life? You're not on your own. There is always somebody out there. And especially if you're in this community, ship success, just pick up the phone. I know how hard it is to say, I'm in a really deep, dark place. I'm in a shit place because as police officers, single mums, we're supposed to be superheroes. We're supposed to be strong. That's not nature's way at all. Um, just remember your whys. Remember your values. Remember it is okay to have a down day and it's also okay to be happy. And it's also okay to just be you and do what you want. What's not okay is to hold it in on your or by yourself and I found that's where it's harder to come out of things if you keep things to yourself 
you, you won't be seen as weak. Um, another thing, you, you can do what, it, it, whatever you want to do, you can do. It's, it's as simple as that. If you want it bad enough, you'll find a way. It doesn't matter how long it takes you, how hard it is. It can take you two years. It can take you three years. It can take you 50 years if you want it to. It's just how fast you want it, how slow you just what it is you want. That's it. What is it that you want? Put it down. When do you want to achieve it? And just go for it. It doesn't have to be fly by the seat of your pants kind of girl, you know, like me just rushing and racing off and just doing whatever. Everybody's got their own ways. And doing it my way sometimes has got its downfalls as well because you're learning fast. Hmm. You, you know, your emotions are just absolutely everywhere. Sometimes I think I wish I'd have taken it a bit slower. I'm glad I didn't now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, just to understand it all a little bit. Um, if you want it, just do it seriously. Amazing. And if, but more importantly, if you, if you feel alone, just reach out. You can reach out to me anytime. I'm there for anybody because I know how it feels. Amazing. And Amazing. don't listen to those who tell you you can't. All my life, I've had people say, you can't do that. You won't do that. You'll never do that. And I've proved every single one wrong. Every single one. You have. You have you've used it as fuel, right? Actually, I've not proved them wrong. I've proved myself right. They don't matter. Yeah. They don't, it comes from nothing. It means nothing. So they don't matter. I need to prove myself right. And it's all about me and my life now. Great mindset, a phenomenal mindset. Kelly, um, one of the last things I like to ask everyone who uh, is a guest on our uh, podcast is, what does entrepreneurship mean to you? <laughs> um, what does everybody else say? <laughs> <laughs> um, it means, for me, it was something that was found accidental, but I absolutely love entrepreneurship because it is, that one word that can take me anywhere, anywhere I want to go and can do anything with that one word. Am I an entrepreneur? Yes. Did I find out a little bit later? Yes. Am I enjoying it? Yes. Will I continue it? Oh, yes. I want to explore the whole true meaning of entrepreneurship. Hopefully one day, I'd love to see a book out there, you know, one day with my name on. I don't, just anything, anything is possible. That is amazing. Um, yeah. So anything to me, is possible. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. That's what entrepreneurship means. Anything is possible for me. 